and welcome to Gatton CNC Live. Uh, let me do a, first a quick sound check, make sure everybody can hear me. Uh, the sound check looked okay, but all I see is my little meter moving. I don't know if you're actually hearing me. So, uh, hope uh, you, that is okay and you can hear me. Uh, okay, I get a yep, so I guess, I guess we're good there. Thank you. Um, when I did the very first Gatton CNC live from out here, I guess four weeks ago now, um, thank you, Hitch. Uh, I said that I was going to do one of these boards just to kind of show some basic wiring because, you know, no matter, <laughs> no matter how much is talked about and all that, there's always, you see some guys on the Facebook groups that still having a little trouble getting this or that to go. And I'm no expert by any means, but I tried to put together a very basic thing like this right here. I, there's no bells and whistles on this right yet. I, ha I have them back here. And if we get time today, we'll add some of those, like a touch plate, the e-stop, uh, limit, and homing switches, those, those kinds of things. Uh, I did go ahead and mount the e-stop, but it's not it's not wired up right now. But I wanted to at least get through today showing the basic of the drivers because that's kind of the same for a lot of different drivers. Uh, I won't say it's, you know, and there's different wiring diagrams you can use. But this is one that I have used, and it works well for me. So I'm going to... Uh, kind of go through from from the simple thing of doing the power switch to getting power to the power supplies and how to split it off to get power to the driver all that kind of stuff and i'll try it i've got a camera behind here uh, that i'll show you <laughs> uh, if i here we go so i've even got a camera behind this thing and you can see how this switch right here is and it's this is just a really simple setup i get the stepper motors and i'm just using terminal blocks because all this is a temporary setup so i've just used the terminal blocks to connect the the steppers but we'll get into that uh, in a few minutes here um, but basically what you're seeing right here is the back of that switch right there and the wiring for this is pretty simple. In fact, there's about a half a dozen really good YouTube videos on how to wire this exact same switch. And usually the videos are guys that are wiring this up along with a, like a little power strip to go into a arcade game. But the switch is, switch is exactly the same. Um, for this particular setup, I told you uh, I was going to do this in the first Cat and CNC Live. And I've since kind of thought about it, and I'm thinking, well, I'll do this, and we'll show this board right here, which is this one right here. And then after we get done with that, I'm going to use different boards and, and or breakout boards. Uh, and that way it'll give, you know, people a, a, an idea of what's different between this one versus other ones. Because there's a lot of different ways to run a CNC. Um, and, and like I said, today I'm just going to try to show you some of the basics on this thing. But uh, let's see here. Let me first give a few shout outs. We'll see who's here. Looks like we got Troy Pritchard, Michael Schuler. It says, I noticed this motion controller is different than your website, and it is the one major thing I have not purchased. So wondering what the difference is in any plus or minus of each. Um, the, there's two of them. Well, there's the one I have. There's two things I have on my website. One is a C10, and it's a breakout board. It's got the parallel port connection. It's just a breakout board. The other one is the same smart 
motion controller, which is very similar to this, except it has another row of um, these connectors right here. And I've got I've got a picture of one that's real similar too. Uh, but you know, really, they're they're all good. depends on depends on how you want to uh, set things up. Uh, if you want one of the USB motion controllers to run with Mach three, you could use either this board or let me let me go ahead and flip to that other one. This is the uh, another picture. This board, if you look, is pretty much identical to this board, except it's got a third row of uh, connectors down here. Uh, and I think that's mostly for doing a spindle hookup. Um, and it says MPG, so uh, manual pulse generator, that kind of thing. Um, this one that I'm using doesn't have that. It's more just to this right here is the uh, going to the stepper motors. And then this is where you've got four inputs and four outputs up here. And like I said, we'll get into that here in just a little bit. Uh, so let's see, we got Dave Krause, Dave Clemens, Mario's here today. How you doing? Kevin Harder, Ray Jones, Kevin Els, Gary Long, all the way from Israel. How you doing? Good to see you. Um, Steve Warnell Media, Javi's here. Uh, how you doing, Javi? Michael, Paul, Thomas, JJ, man, there's a bunch of you snuck in here. I'm probably not going to have time to go down through the list. But anyway, welcome, everybody. All right, let me uh, let me go ahead and get ready to get started here on this thing because we got, we got a lot to cover. And like I said, depending on how the time goes, if I get – if we can do all of this today in, in – 45 minutes to an hour, great. If it starts running long, I may wait and show the, uh, what I call the bells and whistles, the, the e-stop, uh, limit switches, homing switches, and the uh, touch plate. I may just show that at a later time. Hopefully we can get, get through a lot of this today. And I will keep this up here and try to keep an eye on the comments. Uh, yeah, Javi confirms, says the chipset is identical to the bit sensor board. In fact, that is a bit sensor board. The only difference is the MPG connection. All right. So let me, uh, I'm going to grab this other camera back here. Y'all. Y'all don't really need to see me. So I've got a uh, tripod right here. And I'm trying my best not to step on. There's one wire or one cable here, this one here, that's not quite long enough, so it kind of loops up, and I'm afraid if I step on it, I'm going to snatch it out of there. So I'm trying to be very careful. And let's see if I can switch this camera now. And okay, that gets that gets most of it, I think. Okay, I've also got a close up of this uh, the back of this switch, and I've got uh, just. To show you, and again, there's a, about a half a dozen YouTube videos that are really good on this. So I've got the uh, the line coming up here to the top left. The neutral is going to the one right underneath that on the left. And then, of course, the ground goes down here on this lug down here. And then these two, because this has that little uh, lighted switch thing, and it's also got a fuse in here that I should have shown, I guess. This is just a loop that comes, you know, goes beside this one, top top right, and just loops down to the third one. And then this one is right next to the neutral one there and just loops down until right there. So, 
Yeah, he says it doesn't look like they're fusing it. Yeah, let me, uh, let me, now that I've changed camera, there's a fuse. Let's see if I can, oh, let me move this. I don't know if I can get it close enough where you can see it. But there's a, a little thing that slides out. There's a fuse right in there. So, and these are pretty cheap. And let me remind everybody, too, in case anybody starts asking or they see something, they go, oh, yeah, I'd like to see where you got that. All of this stuff that you see on this board that I'm going to be talking about today is, if you're watching on YouTube, it's down in the description. So, um, you know, if you want, if you like this power supply and go, man, I want to get one just like that, all you got to do is go down below in the description in YouTube, click on it, and you can get the exact same one because... It's uh, all, all this stuff I put links to down there so you can find it. Okay, so there's our power switch. And what I like to do, some guys will run the, the three lines over here directly to the power supply and then kind of daisy chain to the other power supply. I like to just take one of these uh, 12 position terminal blocks and then that way I can do it. And I've got four other places to get... Uh, 110 if I need it, but so I just run that to there and you can see I've got the again the, the line of the hops right there The neutrals right there and then the grounds here and then those four Little things are separated so that these four Are the hot these four are the neutral and these four are the ground And then I have them running over and y'all know how to do a power supply. I think they're relatively simple to wire See if I can get over here. Pull this up. So, usually, depending on how it's laid out, sometimes they're on this side, sometimes they're on that side. But you got the first three, uh, you know, and they're clearly marked. You got the L for the line. Um, I think it says N. Yeah, it says N for neutral and then the ground symbol for the ground. So, this is a zero to 60 volt power supply. Uh, and I thought it was pretty cool. I think I showed this in one of the earlier shows. It's got this knob uh, where you can set it. And it's also got a little meter right here or LED that shows you what the voltage is. And you can also, it came with, I, I don't have it on here, but it's also got where you can pull this up and plug in another little pot and you can dial it in even closer. But I think I've got it set to like 47.3 or something like that. Uh, so I'm going to run these drivers. These are stepper online DM 542Ts. Let's see if I'm getting, getting yeah, I got to be careful, make sure I'm, when I'm pointing to something, you can see it in the shot. Uh, and they use 24 to 50 volts. So I've just got this set. I was trying to get around 48, but I, you know, it gets around 40s. Like you, you'll see when I turn it on, I think it says 47.3 or 47.1 or something like that. So I'm bringing the uh, DC voltage from this power supply. And again, I, I've taken this eight position uh, terminal block and set it up with those, uh, I don't know what you call those things, jumpers, I guess, uh, to make a, where I can get 48 volts off of each one of these. And again, this is not super neat, but it's because it's a temporary thing. I'll be changing it off and on. But these red and black wires, you can see I'm pulling off of here to get the 48 volts. And then each one of these, and I'm just going to show one because all four of them are the same. Let's see if I can get... I think I got this messed up. Okay. Ah, let me get over here. Okay, so the the red one from this terminal here is going right here to this terminal. If you look on the uh, let's see if I can swap pictures here. I've got a close up somewhere. Okay, there it is. So basically, 
that red wire coming from that terminal is going here, and this is where you have your plus voltage in your ground, and then the black one is going right here. And then the, and like I said, that's the same for all, all four of these. And then this right here that you see, this white, uh, that has the white uh, cover on it, it is going through this hole, and that's what goes out back to the connect to the stepper motors. The stepper motors have wires of uh, red and green, I'm, I'm sorry, red and blue, which make up the A coil uh, or one coil. I called it the A coil. And then uh, green and black. Well, this wire that I'm using doesn't have green, it has yellow. So I matched everything up, and then the, the yellow goes to the green around back. So and that is the, the red and the uh, blue are your A coil. And in this case, the black and yellow is the B coil. And then on the terminal, I've got them going exactly the same way. The only difference is on the stepper motor, I've got a green wire matched up to the yellow wire um, to match those. Okay. And then on the other part of this driver, we have, and I'm, I'm going to open up this picture again because you can really probably see it better in this picture. I have this yellow wire right here. If you, uh, you might be able to read that up there. That's the direction. If you look, let me look over here, right here. It's the direction on the driver. Uh, and then over here is the direction five volts. And what I've done is I've taken a jumper wire again, just a little loop and spun it around where I'm connecting both the, the five, the plus five volts for the pulse and the direction. And then I'm taking this wire and I'll show you where it goes to in just a minute, but it's going to go to a five block, uh, I'm sorry, five volt terminal. So here I've got the yellow is the direction. And the blue is the pulse. So when I look back up here, you can see that here's what I was just showing you. I've got the yellow is the direction. Blue is the pulse. And they come. Move this thing a little bit. They're coming right here. So I've got... Uh, let me see which way is which. I think it's, yeah, the, at the top here, you've got X. And then the next one down, it's XP for pulse and XD for uh, direction. So it's blue and yellow. And then I've also got the YP, YD, and then ZP, ZD. And then there's also one for A on there. But I want to talk about that for a minute. With, with this type of a board, it doesn't do true slaving in the software. If you take this A, and if you look, you can see it. The, the way these drivers work, this it's X, Y, Z, and A. So I'm, well, you couldn't even see what I was pointing to, could you? Back this up. Okay, so it's X, Y, Z, and A. So this is Y and A. So they're going together to run the y-axis and you'll notice i've got them doubled up right here on this board now what will happen is if you take this a and put them down here where it says a pulse and a direction and then slave it in mach 3 what happens is when you jog you will see both the y and the a move and it's a little bit misleading because you might look do that and go, oh, yeah, everything's working. But it only, for some reason, don't ask me why, but for some reason, it only slaves and runs those two when you push the arrow keys and jog. If you use an MDI command and say, move the Y 10 inches, this is the only one that will move. And you can imagine if you only got one side of it moving, you're going to rack big time. Same thing when you try to run a program with it down there. 
it, it's not slaved, even though Mach 3 says it is. So these boards are a little different than, than some of the ones I'm used to. The one I have back there where I'm running my UC100, it has four different places for all four of the axes. And the other difference is you can't, you can't jog the X axis and the Y axis and the Z axis all at the same time. You can only jog one at a time. And even when you jog and you stop one and then go to jog another one, you almost have to pause a second because it won't do, if you're too quick, it won't move. You'll just have to raise your finger up and then hit that button again. So that's another uh, characteristic of these boards that's uh, a little different. So, so you'll see that I have my Y and my A direction and pulse from this driver and this driver running in and they're both tied into the A. So you can forget about putting the slave in the Mach 3 because it really doesn't do anything. Um, you're just basically running off of three of those, uh, those things. Okay, now I mentioned that red wire this one here that goes into where that loop goes. I needed five volts and I have, again, let me go back to that. Oops, let me get all the way back here. Show this. Okay, you'll see a five volts right there. So that's, that's where I need it to connect to. But since I've got four of these wires from one from each driver, Instead of trying to cram all four of them in there, I just put a wire in there, bring it down here to a four position thing, use another one of those little jumper things, and then I can put a wire on each one to get the five volts that will um, operate that. So that's how I, that's the exact same way I've had them running on my Gatton for, well, other than this, this board here. This, uh, this here. Uh, I've had these drivers wired up that exact same way for, I don't know, probably a couple of years or so now. So, okay. Now, I'm not going to get into this just yet because this is, well, yeah, I guess I will. This is a 24 volt power supply. Uh, and you can see I need 24 volts to run this part of this board up here, which is the inputs and outputs, but I don't really have any of those connected yet, but I went ahead and put this on here. And you can see how what I'm doing is getting my 110 from over here, off of that. And this is just a piece of old cord that I cut up to use because <laughs> it had the right gauge wire in here. And plus it's all the right color too. So it's a lot, you know, if you're like me and you have a lot of those old power supply cords or, or not power supply cords, but like you know, computer cords, you know, you, you, you end up with so many, you don't even know where they all come from. But if you just cut those out, they're perfect because you'll have the black, white, and the brown uh, to use for wiring these up. So, so that's, uh, that's my 24 volt power supply that's going to provide the power for the inputs and the outputs there. Okay, let me go back through here and see if I missed any comments or questions. Um, I don't see any. He says he uses a power strip. Yeah, a lot of the, um, in fact, I almost added one because I've got an old power strip and I thought about cutting the plug off of it and wiring it up here. Um, the uh, just about all of those YouTube videos, like I said, it's guys uh, wiring that switch for an arcade, and just about all of them are using uh, a power, a little power strip, and then plugging stuff in. Okay, let's see, missing thing. Okay, that's Darren. Okay. Um, Rob asked what gauge. I think I think that's 16 gauge, I believe. It's uh, like I said, 
I just used an old power cord because I knew that would be the right gauge, but I'm pretty sure that's it's 16 gauge, I think. Okay, he says 14 gauge. Maybe that's what it is. It's obviously bigger than, than the rest of them. Uh, let's see here. I don't see. Okay. Darren's wanting me to talk about the dip switch settings. Let me go back to this uh, picture I had because I've got a good close-up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take not only these close-up pictures I have, but uh, I'm going to shoot little video clips showing this is what your stepper motor does if one of your direction wires is off. Or this is what your stepper motor does if you've got your uh, A and B coal wires mixed up, uh, you know. And then I can, I can show you how they're miswired, and then you'll be able to see the jumping around and the different things that the the stepper motor does, and the noise it makes. You know, it usually doesn't make a real nice uh, uh, noise when it's when it's doing that. Okay, so here's how I have the dip switches set on this drive. Uh, these are one through eight. Uh, the last uh, four have to do with whatever you want to set your, uh, your stepping. Uh, in fact, I've got one right here that's not the same brand, but it's basically the same thing. But that's how you want to set your uh, uh, pulses per rev with that and this up here is for example this is off on off on off off so for those four the first three uh, in my case I've got it set for a peak current of 3.32 with an RMS current of 2.36 I ran it at the, the higher two settings and especially when I had it on the, the four amp, this thing, those motors get really hot. And, you know, I've got this to wood. So I did, they're not, this isn't running a machine. It's just for an example. So I don't really need it to be, uh, be where it's getting that hot. So I can run them. I ran little test programs watching these things spin. And they don't even get warm with the, the setting I have. But you'll want to, uh, if I can... Let me just hold this out in front of here a minute. One thing I like about the stepper online uh, stuff is you get some pretty decent documentation. So if you look right here, this is showing what the first four uh, are for the current, uh, and then the five, six, seven, and eight are for the micro step resolution. And then, well, actually the first three, then number four is for standstill current. So if you, if you don't want it to have full current all the time when it's just standing still, you can flip that off and it will be at half current. Or if you flip it on, it will be at full current. I've got it off. So uh, as you can see from that picture, so I've got that one off. So I've got it set at half current. And then this setup here, this off, on, off, on, is for 6,400 uh, pulses per revolution. Um, you know, you can run it less than that. You can run it, uh, you can actually run it a little more than that if you wanted to. The, the main thing is that you have the right settings in Mach 3. And for my Mach 3 settings, since I have it set at 6,400, my steps per in the in Mach 3 will be 12,800. And one thing, and I think I mentioned this in one of the other lives, if you, if you, let's say you have this set at, uh, your dip switch is set at, at 3,200, 
and you set your Mach 3 stuff at 3200, then probably what's going to happen is when you tell it to move five inches, it's going to move two and a half because it's, it's not moving enough steps to get to the five inches. The DRO, the digital readout, will say five inches, but it doesn't move five inches. If you've got it flipped the other way where you've got uh, your, um, let's say you've got your uh, Mach 3 set at 6,400, but you've only got this on your dip switch as you've got that set at 1,600, then it's probably going to move twice as much because now you've got twice as many steps as what it needs. So, but I found on most drivers with these micro steps, whatever this setting is, if it's 6,400, you're going to put basically twice that as your steps per unit. And that's, and again, that's the base ballpark figure because you can still run test programs, measure with calipers and, you know, do the calibration to dial it in from there. So, okay. Paul says, is half current better than full current? I don't really see any need for them to be running full current when they're at a standstill. And it, and it will make the drivers, or I mean, not the drivers, the steppers get a lot hotter. So, well, here's, here's kind of my theory on this. Uh, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm sure they probably will. But I kind of look at it like, would you rather build something and measure within the eighth of an inch or would you rather build something and measure to the 32nd of an inch? So it's just the kind of precision you want to get. You're going to get a more accurate uh, thing, although you lose some torque the, the higher you run it. Uh, but you'll get, you know, because it's taking more steps to dial in that location you're trying to get it. Okay. All right. That's probably not a good explanation, <laughs> but that's kind of how I think of it is, uh, you know, what precision do you want to use to build something? Um, okay. So if we have dip set to 64, does that match up to Dave's setting for 64 and Mach 3? If you're looking at those videos where I set in 64, you got to keep in mind those videos are old and I'm probably using an old Xylotex box. So anytime you're watching one of my old videos, if it's more than, you know, look at the date it was published because so many things have changed since then. So be careful. Um, yeah, it'd be it'd be twelve eight is what you probably need if you have your dip switches set to sixty four hundred. You need twelve eight on your Mach three. Yeah, there we go. Bobby oh, just said it right after I said it. So, all right. Ah. Uh, yeah, and then if you want to change that, if you set your dip switches to 32, then Mach 3 would be 64. If you got your dip switches set to 1600, then your dip, uh, Mach 3 would be 32, 3200. So, and again, that should get you pretty dang close to, you know, depending on how accurately you built your machine and that kind of thing. Like I said, from there, and, and you can do it just by eyeballing with a tape measure, which I think I showed last week. Just, you know, do an MDI command, tell it to move 20 inches and have a tape measure laying there. And if it moves, you know, approximately 20 inches, then you then you know you have the steps right. And then you can dial it in from there by running uh, a test program and measuring the calipers and, and getting it really, really close. All right. Um, let's see. What are we doing on time here? Yeah, we're already at 37 minutes. 
I can try to show you if you guys want. I can go ahead and show. Well, I'll just start showing them and we'll see how much. Let me get this picture off of here. All right. All right. So I've got this e stop set right here. It's got a yellow and well, I guess I probably should have showed you that this thing. Uh, let me see, I gotta pull Mach 3 up. Or at least get it up in this window. Okay, so let me I'm gonna be all in the way of this camera now every time. So let me turn this on because what I have right here, and this is kind of what I would suggest for a lot of folks when you're um When you're just getting started, uh, there you can see it's, I was right in the middle. It's 47.2 is what it's showing. Um, but now that I've got this on, basically the setup I have, and if I show you my Mach 3 here. Oops, I got to click in this thing here. There we go. So there's the X. You'll notice when I do the Y, the Y and the A move, and of course the Z. And also notice too, like whenever I, like I'm going to move the X to the right, and if I stop and quickly try to go to the left, I've got my finger mashing the button right now for the left. It won't go. It, it's like you have to stop. Then hit the second. It doesn't like when you try to do it too fast. Uh, which was something very odd to me because I was used to moving. If you watched any of the Gatton CNC lives from previous weeks, you'll see when I jog my Gatton, I just, uh, you know, hit the Y to start bringing it forward. And then I hit the left arrow to bring the X over. And I can even hit the Z too and move all three of them at once with that setup. But, We'll do a, a, a setup with this using those kind of components uh, in a future one. Okay, so let me re real quickly step over here in front. So I've got, I'm going to turn this back off for a second. I've got this e-stop and I've got a yellow and a white wire. And what I'm going to do is... We're going to poke this one through here, this yellow one, I think. Uh, yeah, I just had it over the top, I guess. And let me check my notes to see which one it's set up in Mach 3, 4. Okay, so it's set up for pin 1. So basically, I'm just going to take pin 1 is this one right here beside this black wire from 24 volts. I'm going to put that yellow one. Okay. Okay. In this, so I've got my going to input one. I've got one side of that. E stop going there. Now I need to hit the ground side. And what I did is instead of trying to cram another wire in there, uh, which will work if you want to do it that way, I just came off of here with this black wire and made it a little terminal block right here. So I can pull this off. Just attach this to any of these. Okay, now I'll turn this back on, 
and I'll come over here and I'll come to my Mach 3 and I will turn that E stop on. So I'll go to input. Let me make this bigger so you can see it a little better. I'll scroll down to uh, right here it is. It says E stop. You can see I've already got it enabled, but I just changed the pin so that it wouldn't air out while I had it disconnected. So I just changed that to one. That's where I just connected that. Hit apply. Okie dokie. Hit reset. And I'll also come up here and hit save settings. Now, when I hit this E stop, you can see that that triggers the E stop. So that one was simple enough, just two simple wires. Um, touch plate is kind of the same way. Here I've got a, uh, well, i got a mess, looks like. Let's see, here we go. This is just a, what I use for a cheap touch plate. It's just a piece of aluminum. Uh, this is just, I think this is 18 gauge speaker wire and it's, you know, just two wire. Oh, I'm, I'm doing it again. I'm acting like you can see me. Okay. So here we go. So just a piece of aluminum with the red wire on there that I got an alligator clip for the ground. And then to connect these, this is also very simple. I'm going to connect this one to, let's see which pin I had it on. All right, this one was on pin four. So I'm going to come over here. That's input one, two, three, four. I'll just undo this. Turn that off just for a sec so I don't mess anything up. And you notice when I turn it off that the reset, I don't know if you could hear it. The reset will uh, be in there because it's uh, it can't get the five volts from here. Will that turn off? Okay, so there's that one. This wire happened to have one of these little uh, clips on it, so I'm just going to leave that on there. And again, this is not neat, but it's just to show you how to. So this is coming to my ground block here off of my 24 volt power supply. Okay, now if I take that alligator clip off of there and we turn this back on, then I'll come to ports and pins, input signals, and I want to scroll down to where'd it go? Am I seeing it? Oh, yeah, there it is. Pro. Okay, so it says three, port three, pin number four, which is where I put it. And it needs to be active high. So that would be that would be right so let's see if it maybe it's already uh set up here let's see reset this yeah now if you look well again i'm yakking and y'all can't see nothing okay so if you look right beside the auto tool zero right here you see i have a uh, screen set, thanks to my good friend Peter Pasuelo, uh, where he has added that little uh, LED kind of feature there. So every time it touches, that will light up. So you can check that before you actually start. I also have the, let's see if I can get this to work. Okay, that's on. So if I hit auto tool zero, well, it's actually using. Okay, so there you can see the X. 
going down, or I'm sorry, the Z going down. And then when I touch this, it jumps back up. So there is our touch plate. Okay, let's see. How am I doing on time? I'm probably running along. Yeah, 48 minutes. Okay, so we'll do these. Uh, these are limit and homing switches, and I've got it set up to where I can use them. <laughs> I keep forgetting to get this out of the way. Okay, I've got it set up where, and I've only got three of them because if, the, if this was going to be on a machine of mine, I only use three. I put one on the X, one on the Y, one on the Z, just enough to be able to home them. And so I've got these wired like this, uh, daisy chain, and then I just have the two wires. So let me turn it off, and I'll hook these up. And when you get these hooked up like this, these can operate as uh, – homing switches, and limit switches. So let's see here. Okay, so again, I have this in my software as going to pin three. So this wire is going to come up here. This last one was pin four, so I'm going to put it right next to it. So, okay, and then again, the black wire is gonna go over here to this grounding block that I've got. Again, that comes from the uh, V minus minus on the uh, 24 volt power supply. And this is where it's a little crowded. Now I'm gonna try my best to show you how these work as homing switches. Because <laughs> when you do them when they're not on a machine, you're trying to watch the thing and just hit them by the hand. I found that if I'm too fast, it doesn't work right. And if I'm too slow, it doesn't work right. In fact, if I'm too slow, it'll usually trigger the, the limit switch part of it. So let's get over here. And I've got to turn on a few things here. Let me come back over to Mach 3 and come. No, that's not going to clear out until I. Turn that on. All right, so now we'll come over here. Get ports and pins, input. And I've got this one set to where if I, assuming I would home it to the bottom left, which is not normally how I do it, but I'm just going to enable that one. It's port three, pin three. Uh, and I believe... Yeah, that needs to be turned on. And then I've got the X home. Again, port three, pin three, that's Actify, uh, or I mean Active Low. And then let's do the Y negative and the Y home. And then I'm gonna do the Z home, and the Z would be in the plus, because you want it to zero up. So I think I've got everything set. We'll find out here in a minute if I forgot anything. So now, if I hit reference all home, and let's see, let me do it like this so that you can watch these motors down here. So now if I hit reference all home, you'll see the Z's moving. And then as I click one, yeah, see sometimes I'm too slow or I'm too there it goes. And I should have this on machine coordinates, I guess. 
So now the Y is moving. So I click that. And now the X would be moving back to the left. So I just click one. And there it's zeroed out. And again, if I, I've got a little test program in here, if I just click this and let it start running this test, you can see that if I click any of these now, it'll say limit switch trigger. So all three of these. And when you're doing what I just did, doing it by hand, it doesn't matter which one of these you hit. But obviously, if they were on the machine, they would be hitting whichever one, depending on where you have it. Have it located. So I think that's it. We got it all got it all in here. Nope. Uh, Carol, there's a link you're watching on YouTube. There's gonna be a link below. Uh, in the description for that exact same uh, exact same uh, power supply and i guess they probably i'm sure they probably made them like that a long time but that's the first time i've ever ordered one and it had that and i thought it was pretty cool so you know I, I it may be just because this one is a zero to 60 where you can you know it covers a lot of territory this one is the 24 volt. I've got a, uh, I think this one is a, this one's a 12 volt. I've also got a five volt back there on, that I run my getting with. It looks pretty much like this, except it's five instead of 12. But, uh, all right, guys. So there you go. There's, like I said, this is kind of a, basic setup there is no one size fits all so if you've got different components don't watch this video and go i'm going to do everything like dave did and it should work fine because it may not you know this is you know just, just kind of a basic setup with drivers and then this is just showing how this one particular motion controller card works um, so make sure you read your documentation or your Chinglish, which, which is kind of the same thing. So, uh, let's see, let's see. Javi says he uses one high amperage power supply for all four. Yeah, some of the kits, like, in fact, the stepper online kit that I've been recommending for probably a couple of years now. It comes with two power supplies, but I think they're 36 volt uh, and less amps than something bigger. So if you're gonna try to run them off of one, uh, and that's why I bought this one is because since I'm doing this, I thought, well, I'd rather just have one here than have two and have take up more room. I would have to use a bigger board because I'm trying to put everything flat where you can see it. Whereas if you're putting it in a box or something, You've got the sides and the top and all that to mount stuff too. So, um, okay. It says, can you talk about considerations if one wants also a rotary axis? Well, yeah, I can. And I'm a, I'm a really simple guy. I like to keep things simple. My Gatton CNC runs on four axes. It, you know, two of them are slave. The, the Y and the A are slave, but it still has four axes. There's, there's four drivers back there moving four stepper motors. So what I do, and this just the way I do it, doesn't mean you have to. I have my rotary axis sitting right back there. And when I want to use it, I bring it up here. And when I pull my Y axis, which is moving my Y and my A, and I get it centered over the center line of that rotary axis, 
it's parked then. I no longer need the Y or the A axis. So I have a little terminal block, similar to one of these, over there mounted to that leg of the machine and my stepper motor is tied onto it. And then also the, the wire coming from that driver is going to it. So in fact, let me just bring this out here. Get it out of here. When I want to run this, and here's the here's the step of motor right here. I have this this already connected with a one of those uh, Molex connectors, and so I have another wire where I just disconnect that stepper, and then I connect the wire to that same terminal block and bring it up here and plug it in. And that way, I don't need anything extra. I don't need a five-axis controller to do a rotary axis. I, I you know, but then, like I said, once I get my uh, gantry pulled up and centered over the center line of this, after th after that, you're not moving it anymore. That's the way I do it. What you could also do is buy a five-axis. Uh, motion controller uh, and five drivers and five uh, stepper motors. Of course, this is, a, I have five stepper motors really too, but you could do it separately that way. But to me, it just seems like a waste because when I pull that up and park it over here, even if I had five accidents, you know, five drivers back there and all that, the only thing that would save me is the 30 seconds that it takes me to unhook one and hook up the other. So, that's the way I have always done it, just using a four-axis kit. Um, you know, a lot of people like to do it the other way just so they don't have to swap wires and stuff. But to me, it takes me literally 30 seconds to swap one wire for the other four, you know, the four connections. And then it works fine that way. All right. Okay, Carol found it. Good, good. Yeah, like I said, everything you see on this board should be in those links down there. Every last thing. Uh, okay, I don't, I don't, you know, I may have missed some questions, but I haven't. Okay. I don't see anything, just some comments looks like, but. Anyway, like I said, folks, that's kind of a, a basic thing. And again, it's messy now. That I've put all those wires in front of there. But I would suggest if, if, if you're a newbie and you're doing this DIY, I wouldn't worry about the e-stop, the touch plate, the limit switches and the homing switches. I'm not saying don't put them on your machine, but I'm saying get it to this point where you can move the machine around because you can always, when you don't have any limit switches on, you hit reference all home and that sets zero wherever you move it to. So I ran my old Sidewinder like that for years. And I would encourage folks to, before they get to trying to do all this extra stuff, if they, if they get it to this point, enjoy your machine, play around with it, make some chips, and then come back and go, okay, I'd really like to have a touch plate because I do a lot of, or I want to do some text on text. And it's really important that you get an accurate Z instead of doing the paper thing. Um, you know, all of this stuff is nice to have. And now that I know how to do it, I will probably, in fact, I'm that old sidewinder over there. I'm going to, I've got some drag chain coming and, and uh, some more uh, limit switches. So I'm going to be setting it up pretty similar to the way what I just showed you here today. So, uh, Dave says, where did you get the files to load in the Mach 3? This is, um, this is really the same family of boards like uh, what some other controllers have. 
So it's basically just that R and R uh, driver that you get. It came with a. I didn't mention that, but this came with a CD or maybe it was a DVD. I don't know. And then about a three foot uh, USB cable, which to me a three foot cable is next to useless. Uh, you can't get anything that close. At least I don't want to put my stuff that close. And then the, the DVD was pretty much useless other than, you know, getting the driver, the RNL driver off of it. Uh, and, you know, there wasn't an XML file. I just made my own for that because I was setting all this stuff. And I did the same thing as I was building this up. Uh, I was using my laptop and I just put just a generic thing in there and started setting the pins and all that stuff you know, made sure I got this part done and the motor's running and working right. Then I added the e-stop, made sure all that was right. Then I added the touch plate, made sure that was working fine. And then I added the uh, limit switches last. So. On the setup you have there, could you hook it? to the A-axis you're not using. If you're talking about the rotary, yeah, that's what I do. It's once I pull it up, I'm no longer using the, I call that my A and that my Y, but that's what I do. I disconnect that motor once I've got this centered. You gotta make sure you get that move right first, but once you get it centered and everything's locked down, then then the gantry's not moving. So you got those two, really two axes, the, the Y and the slaved A that aren't gonna move anymore. So why not use them uh, then spindle control i'll probably get into that later this this is really pretty much all i wanted to show with this board right here which is some you know like i said this is what i consider a basic setup for this board uh, or most i should say motion controller and quit calling it a board i guess because it's not it's not a breakout board it's a motion controller but uh, that's it. I hope uh, I hope this was helpful. If it was, leave me a thumbs up on the way out. Uh, and uh, like I said, what I will be doing is on my website, I'm going to be taking close up pictures, kind of like some of these that I showed you. Um, I had some more that I didn't really even finish showing. And I had... There we go. So I've got that close up. I tried to take pictures of this as I went along. Show and see. There you can see there's, with all the other wires missing, there's just the ones running at the 48 volts to the driver. So you can clearly see how they go now. Uh, but I'll, I'll be taking a picture of this whole thing. And also showing these close up pictures. And then I also want to shoot some real short video clips like, okay, here's what, if your motor's doing this and have it, you know, show it making the noise and moving erratically and stuff, this is what it is because I'll pull off one of these direction wires or different things like that. So hopefully that'll be a good reference where the newbie guys can go back and, and find things out. Okay. I hope, like I said, I hope everybody got something out of that. Uh, hope I didn't confuse anybody. <laughs> it's it's not really that hard because, the, I mean, it looks complicated here because of all these wires and stuff, but really it's, it's you just do one driver, and then when you know you've got it right, you just do it again three more times. So everything's the, you know, everything's the same on each one. So, all right. Okay, Gary it says, Gary, did you mean using the... Um, well, I could use that here, but I would still need another, uh, another driver or swap one of these out and say, okay, I'm going to... Um, 
You know what I mean? I'd have to take these wires and put them down here. It, that's to me, that's more trouble than, than what I do just by switching the wires and loading another, um, another machine profile in. Anyway, I hope, hope y'all got something out of that. Um, anybody's got any questions, feel free to leave them down below or email me or whatever. You know, y'all know how to get all of them. Put them in the Facebook group and tag me. Uh, something like that and i'm sorry we went a little long but i figured we were close enough we might as well try to show those last three things uh, because like i said it's just two wires on all of that so all right i will uh get out of here let y'all get back to your day have a happy hump day and we will see y'all next week mm -hmm.